Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 158 of Rush Roundtable and also episode 397 of Tim's Vinyl Confessions. This is our very first crossover um, between Rush fans and TVC. Of course, Tim's appeared on our channel many, many times, and uh, the three of us have appeared on your channel a handful of times as well. But uh, this is the first one where we're <clears throat> kind of branding as a crossover. Um, so, as far as the panel goes, Top left for me, uh, we have Ralph Hoffnagel, myself, Ryan Murphy. Bottom left, Todd Evans. We're all a Brush fans. And bottom right, we have Tim, uh, Tim's Vinyl Confessions. So this is um, alternate Hugh Syme album covers. Um, so I'm going to let Tim explain this uh, momentarily. But um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to go through chronologically. So starting from the debut album, ending with Clockwork Angels. And um, we're basically going to give you some Hugh Syme artwork that we think could have possibly served as a Rush album cover. So, Tim, why don't you uh, go ahead and take it away with your inspiration and, you know, introduce whatever. Tim's, Tim's our host for tonight, by the way. So there you go. It's all you. Thanks, Ryan. And, and thanks all of you guys for indulging me in this, this particular uh, flight of fancy. I've had this idea for a long time. Ryan and I have been talking about it. Um, this all started... Um, one of the idea, I'm not sure when it came to me. It's a few months ago, but as Rush fans, we all know that the artwork of Hugh Syme is a very vital component to our uh, immersion into this music, into the, the musical universe that Rush created. The back covers, the front covers, the liner notes, the tour books, the DVDs, the T-shirts. You know, Hugh Syme is just, he's the guy. And I thought it would be fun because I just happened to notice in my own music collection, how many album covers by other artists in my collection that were designed by Hugh Syme. And I thought it might be fun to do a little bizarro world exercise where, you know, if we could pick something that Hugh Syme designed that was not a Rush album cover, but say, hey, you know what? This would have made a good cover for this Rush album or that Rush album. And I kind of, I ran that idea from, from, through Ryan and he went for it. So this is the crossover event, no crossover event. Nobody knew they wanted. <laughs> this is like back in the eighties when they had Marvel secret wars comics. Um, you have to be a certain age to get that. But uh, I had a lot of fun doing this. Some of these came right to me. I knew exactly what ones I wanted to use. Some of them I had to struggle with some of them. I'm still not completely sold on. Now I went through um, and maybe went overboard with the idea. I did something for every rush album, every studio album that is, including the feedback EP. Uh, the other guys have picked anywhere between four and seven, and that's cool. We're going to go through this chronologically album by album. And for me, I don't know about you guys, but when I um, broke these down, they, they kind of fell into one of four categories. Either they were kind of abstract, maybe need a little bit of explanation, maybe need a deeper under really, really deep knowledge of the lyrics, the theme of the album, and once you know that, you go, okay, yeah, I can see why he picked this one. Number two is literal. You know, you look at it and go, well, yeah, there it is. You know, makes sense. I get it. Number three is actually similar. I This can't, this happens a couple of times where it's actually quite close to another piece of art that Hugh did that ended up the Rush album cover. Because if you get a good idea, you can recycle it. And the fourth one is just humor. Something that struck me funny because... As any serious Rush fan knows, these guys never took themselves too seriously. They took the music seriously. They took the presentation seriously, but they weren't above putting puns or jokes into their album artwork. So I thought, you know, let's let's take this, do this, you know, in case. And I, and I don't think there are many out here like this, but, you know, there might be fans that know Hugh Syme only as the Rush guy, you know, and that's that's basically the thing he's most known for. That's why he called his book you know, uh, serving a life sentence, but he's done work for artists of all musical genres, for movie posters, for print ads. All you have to do is go to his website, usime.com or follow him on Instagram, Syme Studio, and you can see just the breadth of his work. So that's where the idea came from. And um, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to see if we've got any similarities or something that somebody was like wow i never would have thought of that one so yeah i i thought we'd do this um chronologically and we all know hugh 
did not start designing for Rush until album number three. But I thought it might be fun if, you know, I did find alternate cover art for the first couple of albums. So um, I don't believe anyone else chose anything for the first Rush album, the self-titled debut. So I'm going to share my screen and show you what I thought of for the first, uh, what might have worked in another, another timeline for the first Rush album cover. Now, we all know what the first Rush album looks like. It's, uh, uh, you know, the great Donna Halper, our good friend Donna. What did she describe it as? A homemade hands or something like that? She, you know, it's, a very, it's very homespun looking. But I like it. I love the logo. I love the font used. I love the whole explosion thing. It, it fits. So I thought, I thought, okay, explosion. What have we got here? So I'm going to share my screen here. And for my choice, I'm going to go with this. As soon as it decides to come up. Any minute now. Okay. Can you guys all see that? Looks like it's delayed for me. Okay. Yeah, still nothing, eh? Still nothing. Yeah, it's still thinking about it. Okay. Fortunately, let's stop that. Fortunately, I brought everything with me. So that's what we'll do. <laughs> okay. We might have to cut that. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll leave it in. That's great. <laughs> okay. So for the first Rush album, I chose this. Uh, this is one of my favorite bands besides Rush. Not a lot of people know who they are. Well, some people do. Bands called y and stands for Yesterday and Today. This is their 1987 album, Contagious, on Geffen Records. And what you see here is a vial or a beaker or a test tube being broken, and stuff is just exploding into the atmosphere, and you've got this line where it cuts off. This is a Hugh Syme uh, designed album cover. So I thought, okay, it's an explosion. Yeah, why wouldn't that work? For the first album, that's my choice for the debut. What I would have might have gone with. Good stuff. So, Fly by Night. I know a couple of you have Fly by Night. Um, Todd, what is your choice for an alternate Fly by Night? Okay, well, I chose this particular image right here, and uh, it was used for an album by the prog band called uh, Tiles. I think this is a 2008 album. But uh, I actually had three for um, that I picked out for Fly By Night, and I couldn't really sell the other two, so I eliminated them. But this one is super literal, and uh, I mean, I see the moon there. It almost doesn't look like night, but I think it's a, it's a great image, uh, and so uh, that's why I chose this. Cool. And if I'm not mistaken, the, one of their albums, at least, was produced by Terry Brown. Uh, yeah, There's, I think so. Yeah. I don't remember which one, though. So, and Ryan, you've got one for Fly By Night? Yes, I do. You see that? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right, so um, this one I pulled from his Instagram. I do believe it's also on his website. He's titled this Winterhawk. Um, and, of course, Tim's Vital Confessions uh, liked this post. Yeah, apparently, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think this one is, I took this one literally. Uh, this is, this is a likeness, you know, it's an owl versus an owl, right? So, and it's a, it's an owl, I guess, carrying a child. Um, one shoe's falling off of him or her. I can't, I can't tell, but it's, it's night, same thing, moon. Um, and I just, I just thought it looked cool. I thought, you know, this is, Fly by Night is one that that Hugh Syme didn't do, so I thought, well, if uh, if there's ever a 40th, or well, I guess 50th, right? 50th, yeah. Um, coming, you know, perhaps he could uh, maybe tweak this or something like that. So that's that's mine. Cool. So the one I picked for Fly by Night is um, very kind of similar to the one Todd picked. It's another prog band. It's a prog band that actually kind of. I guess you could say maybe assumed the mantle of, you know, progressive hard rock in the nineties. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe from 2005 on all of their artwork has been designed by Hugh Syme. So he's become their guy. And when, I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but when Hugh Syme, 
does the design. It's all the way down to the font used in the booklet. I mean, it's very, very distinctive. So this band's going to be making a couple of appearances. Okay. Yep. This is Dream Theater. And this is their 2011 album, A Dramatic Turn of Events. So you've got a, you know somebody on a tightrope and there's an airplane. No, it's not. I don't think it's at nighttime. It's pretty clear blue sky, but there's a plane. It's blue. <laughs> so that's why I chose this one as a stand-in for Fly By Night. I'm sure that Hugh could make that one night if he wanted to. Oh, yeah, yeah. A <laughs> couple of tweaks. <laughs> well, if I was any good at Photoshop, I could do it too. <laughs> um, so I believe I'm the only one who did uh, picked one for Caress of Steel. So I'll just go ahead and show it off. This is actually one of the first ones I thought of. I thought, yeah, this is going to be Caress of Steel. <laughs> this is Kiss and their 1992 album Revenge on Mercury Records. Uh, you know, caress, soft touch. It's not very soft looking, but it's very steel looking. It's just these steel girders. Uh, and uh, I just think it's a cool album cover. The band looks cool in the back. And this is the only time that they ever worked with you, Syme. But um, yeah, that's doesn't get much more steel or steely than this album cover here. You know, Tim, I thought Caressive, when I started doing this, I thought Caress of Steel was going to be the easiest one. I thought, oh, I'll find something for that. And then I could not find anything. <laughs> I do want to share this, that someone left a comment on our Caress of Steel deep dive uh, the other day, Tim, and said that the the Necromancer on the front of um, the, album. the album cover yeah. was after was actually taking it, taking inspiration from the St. Bruno statue at the Vatican. Got oh, the hand yeah. up in the air, the skull yeah, on the, the left. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's very cool. I thought that was uh, interesting. So, yeah. Um, so, oddly enough, um, we're at 2112 now, and I had a hard time with this one. I had a really hard time with this one. And because my screen sharing is not working, I'm going to have to make do with um, it's a photo of the album cover, but it's from a compilation and it's got writing over it. So, I'm going to hold this up. It's another prog band. Uh, it's another prog band that's worked with Terry Brown and Hugh Syme. I don't know how well this shows up. This is the oh, band yeah. Fate's Warning and their 1989 album Perfect Symmetry on Metal Blade Records. And I don't know how well you can see this, but you've got these old men at like an assembly line and there are these st statues or figurines going by. And I, this one's kind of abstract because you get the feeling that they have to be all exactly the same. And if one went by that wasn't exactly the same, there would be trouble. They would get rid of that one. And so everything's got to be the same, just like, you know, no individuality in the story of 2112. Um, you know, to take it a step further in the abstract thing, I thought, you know, in, a, in, in another, you know, flip the timeline around, if anyone is familiar with, and not, I'm in, not even into this band, but London Calling by The Clash. We all know what that album cover looks like. It's just a black and white photo of somebody smashing a guitar. If Hugh Simon designed that album cover, that would work perfect for 2112 because they smash a guitar. But anyway, yeah, I had a hard time coming up with one for, for 2112, but I finally, uh, I finally settled on that one. So I believe that um, Ralph has a selection for a Farewell to King. So let's, let's see what you have, Ralph. My screen. Um, this episode is just us trying to figure out how to share. Yeah, right. so, yeah. work. <laughs> work four hands. All right. Sure. Well, is that showing now? Oh, it's yeah. Awesome. So with this, um, yeah, so, you know, it's kind of reminded me of the uh, Farewell to Kings album cover with the city in the background. And instead of a king, I'm picturing the queen and it's kind of ambiguous if she's sad that the fair, you know, the kings are gone or she overthrew the king and it's Farewell to Kings. Hello to the. Oh, queen. OK. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the pillars almost look like the 40th anniversary cover. I was yeah. just about to say that reminds me that, of the 40th that cover. That ticks off then. a lot yeah. of boxes. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. Yep. That's fantastic. Isn't there so what is that next to her? Like a, a crow or like a, a peacock or something? Peacock? Is it a peacock? Yeah, look, yeah. yeah. Isn't there like some I don't know if it's a peacock or a crow or something, but there's some 
bird, I think, in one of the 40th anniversary graphics um, for the individual songs. I think I think it's like I think you're right. And also, Xanadu there's or, a, a, like a swan or something like that in the beginning of the video for the title song. For the, yeah, mm-hmm. when they're outside. Yeah. So yeah, right. no, that's a great one. That's really good, good pick. Yeah, really good. Pick. Yeah, and it's you great. can tell it's just it just looks like something. It looks like a Hugh Syme design. For sure. Yeah, great spot for the for the look band logo right there in the top. In oh the yeah, center. all this open space. That's fantastic. <laughs> yep. Good choice, Ralph. So mine, mine's kind of literal, but not for the album cover itself. And this is the second time this band's going to be talked about. This is Dream Theater again. This is their uh, 2020 live album, Distant Memories, live in London. Now. Okay, so the skull's not wearing a crown, but the first thing I thought of was the poster, and uh, my son's actually got a t-shirt with that design on with the skull yep. and the crown. I was thought pretty is pretty cool. Also, there's a Union Jack ghosted in there. You know, the album wasn't recorded in London, but it was recorded in the UK. So that's what I chose for Farewell to Kings. Yeah. So the next one, the next one is the most similar of any of them, I think. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to hold this so you can't see what it is at first. So for Hemispheres, I chose this. So you might be thinking, well, that's the, that's the Hemispheres guy. <laughs> but it's not. Uh, this is the debut album from a band called The Storm. And The Storm was sort of an offshoot of Journey. This came out in 1991. Three out of the five members of this band were former members of Journey. Uh, Greg Raleigh, who was the original keyboard player and vocalist. He was also in Santana. Bass player Ross Valerie and a drummer that Neil has long admired, Steve Smith. Steve Smith figures into the, journey, uh, the, the Rush story because it is Steve Smith that introduced Neil or suggested that Neil work with Freddie Gruber. But yeah, I thought this was perfect for Hemispheres because that looks so much like, you know, the, the guy in the suit on the cover of Hemispheres. So I thought that was one that was like, you know, Hey, this, this is a good design. Let's let's do something similar with it. So that's my design for hemispheres. Um, so now we have uh, permanent waves. Two of you have designs for permanent waves. Let's see what Todd came up with. Okay, so um, I came up with uh, this right here, and uh, I almost didn't pick that because I thought, oh, it's just waves. I just, you know, picked the word waves and that's why I picked that. But uh, I, I actually, the more I looked at it, the more I liked the idea of using it for permanent waves. And uh, I, um, and, you know, I kind of feel like the, 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 you know, when I, when I first saw the cover of the real cover of permanent waves, I wasn't quite sure what it had to do with permanent waves. And so I thought, well, maybe I can just be really open with the interpretation, but uh, I really like the images and it's part of, of, of three different images. And on, on, on Hugh's website, they're called uh, Popeye adrift. And that's supposed oh. to be some kind of uh, version of Popeye. I so that's why the boat looks like it says on olive on it. it. What's that? The boat looks like it says olive on it. So that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just thought that all three of the images were just fantastic. And so that's why I picked it. That's good. I like that. And uh, Ryan, you have one? I do. Um, ah. This one's titled Global Warming. This one's also from his Instagram. Um, See, Jerry like, and Steve like this one? Was like by the Rush cast. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> fan tunes and melanie as well it looks like there um but yeah the uh i mean i just for this one i took you know landmark being flooded with waves it was basically the background of permanent waves you know um that's a pier i think in texas we said in the permanent waves deep dive i can't remember but that's an actual so. landmark it was from a hurricane you know it was flooded with oh uh, you know from the from the hurricane and you and the permanent waves cover you actually have uh I believe that's you, Sime, right there, waving on the left. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it just, it, it, I mean, it just, it just brought um, permanent waves to my mind when I saw this on his Instagram. So, uh, I thought it would be a good pick, another kind of literal one. That's yeah, good. I don't think there are any bad ones. I mean, it's, you know. So the one I picked again, I you know, like Todd, basically all I had going for me was waves. There you go. <laughs> this yeah. is um this is a band, a Canadian band called Helix, hard rock band. 
And this is their 1993 album. It's a business doing pleasure. So what you got here is sort of a guy in a like, you know, suit and tie business suit and he's surfing. Well, that could also lead into the sort of, you know, idea about commercialism talked about in spirit of radio. And it's, you can't tell from this, but the, it's a, the wave, if you were to flatten that picture out is actually a picture of what was uh, our old um, Canadian $1 bill, which was of course supplanted in, uh, 1987 by our one dollar coin which you know affectionately known as the loony so yeah that's what i came up with for permanent waves um for my next one moving pictures i think i'm the only one that has one for moving pictures and oddly enough so 2112 and moving pictures we all know are the most successful rush albums they're the probably the two i had the hardest time trying to find something that that would fit um this is what i ended up with this is the band Night Ranger and their 1988 album, Man in Motion. You've got a little tiny figure walking. I don't know if you can see that or not. Motion. Yeah. He's yep. moving. How moving a picture is it? I don't know. But that's, uh, that's what I came up with. So I had something for each album. Um, so that takes us to Signals. And I believe Todd has something for Signals. I do. Let's see here. Now, the only uh, problem with this one is how would you crop it? I think you'd have to add more sky, but yeah, make it more of a as square. As soon as I thought, saw it, I thought, oh, well, that signals. Um, I, I, I really like the image. I don't know if, if it, because it's, it's, it's aliens, whether it really, it fits as well as, you know. You've got a black and white animal on there. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and that was one yeah. of the other things that I thought was cool about it and it sort of tied it to signals. But uh, yeah, I chose that one. That's cool. Well, little so, do you know that is actually the 40th anniversary cover. No, I'm just totally kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine though? <laughs> like that? Could you imagine if we got the scoop on that, you yeah. sees us and goes, oh crap. Oh crap. We have to pull the video down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the next one, I would, I, would, I would call this one very similar, but it people are going to see this and go, why didn't he pick this for another Rush album? And there's a reason for that. So for signals, I picked this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the one and only album by Coverdale Page, David Coverdale from White Snake and Jimmy Page. This came out in 1993 on Geffen, a Hugh Syme design. And yes, uh, you're probably thinking, boy, that that reminds me of Snakes and Arrows Live. Um, and it does. But um, I thought this worked for signals as well. Also, this is kind of a double meaning because um if anybody's familiar with led zeppelin their 1976 album presence has this black object this obelisk on the front cover and then the series of pictures inside of it you know, in all these different environments you see that black object they kind of did the same thing with this this road sign appears in all of these different settings so that was like you know you've got the hugh syme touch mm -hmm. but it's also a little bit of nod to the hypnosis uh cover for the zeppelin album so yeah um, there's a reason I didn't pick this for Snakes and Arrows. It was originally going to be, but I found one that, anyway, there was a few that I went back and forth on. So we all picked something for Grace Under Pressure, which, which is pretty cool. I think that title opens itself up to a lot of images, and I'm really curious to see what everybody has. Um, Todd, what have you got for Grace Under Pressure? Okay, so I have this right here, and uh, oh. I... This out of all the images I picked, I think this is my favorite one. But I I thought of it as you know you think of Grace, you think of a little uh, you know a, a, a little girl could could represent Grace, and she's certainly under pressure there. So uh, yeah, so that's that's why I chose that one. And uh, I just that's a beautiful image. You could conceivably beautiful. use that for Fly by Night too. Yeah, I thought about it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. cool. So Ralph, what have you got for Grace under pressure? I went with a little humor. Um, got this boy on a bicycle. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've seen that one before. This one reminds me of my son because he's got very red hair. <laughs> okay, right. He could have a more graceful look on his face, but I uh, just <laughs> this made me laugh. I said, "Oh, it's Grace under pressure." Yeah. And Ryan, what have you got? 
uh, another one here from um, Hugh Symes Instagram. This one's called Uphill Climb. Um, this reminded me of um, the After Image music video. There's a there's, yes. a, there's a there's a man on a on a on one of those uh, one of those huge, bicycles, yeah. huge tricycle looking things. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and he and he just goes flying, you know, through the picture like that. Um, with that color scheme of a background, um, I, I mean, he the whole thing with Grace Under Pressure is you know, exhibiting Grace under pressure. That was what we you know, we talked about on the deep dive. And I, to me, it looked like this man is exhibiting Grace under pressure, he's riding this you know, bicycle or tricycle up a hill into fire. I mean, um, and it also, it also brought to mind the lyric between the wheels frozen in that fatal climb but the wheels of time just pass you by you know the, with the the title of this piece what you called it with uphill climb it, it brought that lyric to mind so yeah as as uh todd said you know his choice was uh you know one of his favorites that he chose and, and same here with me too this is this is definitely one of my one of my top ones that i chose so oh i like that so mine's quite literal uh and it's actually quite humorous too and i've actually unfolded the cd booklet for this one how well this is going to show up with all of the uh so this is um the band tesla and their 1994 album which is charmingly titled bust a nut which is an expression i was not familiar with in 1994 <laughs> now now i hear it a lot but basically i'm guessing if you were to buy the vinyl it would have this you know this complete image on it but i'll show you i'll fold it back up and show you what the actual just front of the cd looks like it's this very elaborate and dare i say steampunk looking um literally a, a nutcracker you know and its sole design seems to be to, to crush this acorn which immediately made me think of the c clamp on the inside of uh grace and her pressures yeah. so so yep. there you go so that one covers a bunch of bases for me i think it's a little humorous and uh, it's also quite literal because you can see that you know and it's got all this gadgetry like it's a it's a really striking image unfortunately it just doesn't show up that well yeah uh so that's grace under pressure now um ryan has power windows ryan has two for power windows of course right <laughs> yes um so this first one here is oh yeah uh, this is my last one from his instagram um uh, he says uh created for my my art gallery exhibitions they're here i assume here. they're here is the is the title i don't know to me it just reminded me of the power windows cover because of the television and a poorly lit room so um that, that was my thinking with that um you know perhaps uh 40th anniversary of power windows box set yeah. cover yeah. that totally works yeah um, again a great place for the band logo right there yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> now um, if only he'd have made it a dalmatian yeah it's almost like he's planning ahead here um yeah and then the next one here is this one's I've called seen this look, yeah this one's called look here i think i took this one from his website i think this is the last one that i have the, is, the is that not for. an album cover by stone sour i think it is i think it's yeah, an album I cover so. for something yeah yeah uh but to me it reminded me of the back cover of power windows yes. which which is the um you know, the blonde haired boy with the binoculars, binoculars up to his yeah. eyes. So uh, I thought, uh, yeah, could have been a could have been a cool alt alternate. That's awesome. OK, so for my for Power Windows, I'm revisiting an album cover I've already done in to a certain extent. You all saw this the Storm album cover with the, uh, the Hemispheres dude in the cover. He likes the top hatted guys, right? <laughs> Let's flip this around. This is the back cover. And you see what appears to be like an old Volkswagen bug uh, in, immersed mm, okay. in water. Now, there's windows. Does it look very powerful? No, but we all know that Hugh and Neil like to use irony sometimes, just like a farewell to King. So I thought, yeah, that might work for power windows or the loss of power or afraid to lose the power and end up like this. So that's what I chose for. I, I got double duty out of this one. <laughs> Okay, so, um, okay, Ralph, you've got one for Hold Your Fire. Oh, and this one, uh, I went literal black and two and two. Again. Yeah. Sorry. 
Second. <laughs> Insert witty comment from Ryan here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's like cool. so Oh yeah, that's great. I mean, it's right. Literal. Hold your fire. Um, hold your fire. Yeah. 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 So. Thought it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. He had two different uh, images of it. One was a different color, and I thought this thread really stuck out. Yeah. yeah. What's the foreshadowing for Roll the Bones there? She's standing on the bones yeah. there. There's also arrows, you know, snakes yeah. and arrows. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Got the bird in there again. All Which those he elemental... does do, like with his, uh, with his 40th anniversary box, that's, he does foreshadow a little bit, you know? Yeah. yeah. The Dalmatian. Oh, there's the hold your fire one, years. boys. We, you know, wait till 2027. <laughs> or, or, the or the 30th anniversary. Perhaps it's coming, you know, like Could like be. the day after this airs, you know, spoiler. You <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so the one I picked for hold your fire, again, it's not my favorite. It kind of reminds me of that Night Ranger one, and they both came out around the same time. This is Survivor. Oh, yeah. Too hot to sleep. This came out in 1988 on CBS Records, and you know there's like a fiery sunset there. Again, not my favorite, but I wanted to pick something from my collection for every album. But it does it, it reminds me a lot of of this, and I often I wonder if these weren't done right around the same time, and you know, uh, neither of these albums were successful, so I wonder if they were just like give us something quick, you. Not that they're bad. I just. They, they kind of remind me of each other uh, in that way. Which one of those came out first, Tim? Boy, I I, I think they both came out around the fall of 88. Like, oh, I think okay. it would have been with, with weeks of the other. I, I'm really not sure which one came out first. I was wondering Probably if the one Night of Ranger the band one, said, give me sure something they, like that other one. Because <laughs> they were both, um, they're both like in the delete bins within months. So, so, um, so that was... Hold your fire. Okay. Now, did I have this written down right that um, Ralph has one for Presto? Yes. That okay. Is correct. Okay. Like this one be a little quicker. <laughs> All right. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. This is from a Def Leppard retroactive, yep. I think. Great. So when I first saw it, I immediately thought War Paint. Oh. Uh, yeah, you know, on the yeah. mirror, Good and then point. just the, then I just kept looking at it. I kept saying like, okay, well, super doctor can be in there, and then just like the way she's looking, like we've caught her in her illusion that she's got trying to put on for everybody. So I thought that went with the illusion themes of Presto, and also you got the another foreshadowing roll of bones. This little it kind of looks like a skull, the yeah. white yeah. around the mirror. So pretty cool. That looks like the that reminds me of the. Internal artwork. There's a picture of Getty looking at a mirror, right. and I think it's in Presto. I definitely has the Presto glasses on. I can't remember if it was in Presto or Roll of Bones, but it's definitely that. The Torbuck, he's... right? Yeah, yeah it's Torbuck. Yeah. I think it's the Torbuck. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, but he's got like cool. like four or five different like noses like in front of him, yeah. like prosthetic noses. That yeah. Right. Good choice. Very cool. So this is one of the this is one of the humorous ones I picked. Hopefully we don't get in trouble for this one. Presto. <laughs> this oh my. This is uh, Great White, the the unluckiest band in rock and roll. Uh, oh. This is their 1991 album Hooked. Actually, what you're looking at is the back cover of the CD, but that's the uncensored cover. This is the censored one, uh, and I just thought Presto, you know, whatever. And again, let me just open this up. If you can see how the lyrics are written and the credits, the font, I mean, Hugh just takes over when he does the design. It's probably too blurry, but yeah, it's the yeah. same font. So now that brings us up to Roll the Bones. And uh, Todd, you've got something for Roll the Bones. Yeah, uh, let's see here. So I chose this image right here, which is... Uh, I'm pretty sure part of the, the 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 dream theater art, and it looks like distance over time. Yeah, very much so. to me. Yeah. What's what's yeah? I but I couldn't find that image. Like I've only I don't have the special edition or anything of dream of distance over time, but I couldn't find that image. And I also wondered if maybe it was a uh, systematic chaos image because oh, in that group of images there are ants. ants. 
And yeah. so I'm not totally sure where that ended up, but uh, yeah. but I, I liked rough... it a lot. Yeah, that's awesome. I like that. Um, okay, Ryan, what have you got for Roll the Bones? I have um, this ah. one here. So I, I couldn't help myself. I, I threw this one <laughs> in last minute being, you know, that Iron Maiden is probably my second favorite band. Um, this album cover, of course, is the only Iron Maiden album cover that was done by Hugh Syme. Um, it is, you know, very unique. It doesn't look like the Iron Maiden Eddie that we're used to seeing. Um, it's very different. And it just got me thinking bones, like Eddie was executed. There are his bones, you know, and, and some skin and organs. That's the X Factor, right? <laughs> it's called the X Factor. Yeah. Yep. Iron Maiden's X Factor, mid, mid 90s, 96, I think. 95. Uh, 95. Yeah, I think it's mid, mid 90s. But um, yeah, I mean, I just, I had to throw that in there with one of them. I had to match it up with something and roll the bones. Just seemed like it was, it was the best. So that, that, there's my, uh, my funny one, I guess. There so you go for this. Cool. So for my roll the bones, this is the first time we have any repetition. I went with Def Leppard retroactive. Okay. So yeah, it's got the optical illusion of the skull. It's also if anybody's ever seen Alice Cooper's Dada album, they use the same sort of ID or idea. I think it's like a Salvador Dali, the disappearing bust of uh, what's it called? Anyway, yeah, it look it looks like a couple of figures, but you go back and it's a skull. So. Also, um, in some of the promo for Roll the Bones, Neil talks about something called Vanitas, um, which is um, mm, yeah. the, the Dutch have and the, the expression memento mori, which means remember death and the transience of you know living things and the uselessness of vanity and all of that. Um, Neil talked about that a lot when he talked about his lyrics for Roll the Bones. So yeah, the fact that it's a skull and it's got those things going for it, I thought that would be perfect for, uh, for Roll the Bones. We talk about that quite a bit on the uh, deep dive for Roll the Bones, too. So go check that out if you haven't. So next up, uh, Ryan's got one for Counterparts. Yeah, this was a weird one. Um, I kind of found this one last minute, too. Um, but <laughs> it's kind of like... Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Come and, play and, with us. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very horror-ish, you know. Um, you know, if, if Rush took a horror themed i don't know uh, approach but um does it really fit with any of the songs no it just is i don't know these these twins that are yeah uh one is a it looks like one's a um, doll like you know kind of like the puppet on Pharaoh the kings you know it's got the strings yeah but um they just look like counterparts to me you know things that go together um and of course this picture was titled second nature so there's a little bit of a rush pun oh, there cool. as well so um yeah just creepy but yeah, yeah. i want to can i add something to that that sure. on 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 hugh's website says that it it, it it he titles it second nature the real cover and so this album right here by the band Flying Colors, Second Nature, which is a kind of a super group with uh, Neil Morris and uh, Mike Portnoy, and, uh, Mike Portnoy in yeah. it. I believe, and I don't want to get this wrong, but I believe that that cover that Ryan just showed was presented to Flying Colors and rejected. But I, I don't know that for sure, but the title seems to suggest that. What's That's the awesome. title for that called? This is called, oh, Second, called Nature. Second Nature. Oh, yeah, I got you. And, and the image that you showed in on, on Hugh Syme's website says uh, Second Nature, the real cover. So you get the feeling maybe that was one that, that Hugh had pitched to them. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think. Uh -huh. yeah. So this is one of my favorites, and it, it's, it's, it works on so many rush levels. This is another Canadian band called Honeymoon Suite. This is their second album, The Big Prize, came out in 1985. And you've got a married couple on here. Uh, you've got old people. You've got young people. But most of all, what brings us into Rush Land is if you take a good look at this cover, the groom is a gentleman by the name of Neil Cunningham. Neil Cunningham oh. was also the cover model for Power Windows. Now, both of these albums have 1985 copyright dates on them. They're both Hugh Syme album covers. 
I have to wonder if they weren't done at the same time. So this is 1985 with Warner Brothers. And uh, yeah, for me, Counterpart, uh, I had to use this for something and Counterpart seemed to be the one that fit the most because you've got the bride and groom, you've got, you know, you've got people that are visiting, you've got people that are home. So yeah, that was my for Counterpart. Uh, so test for Echo, that would be Ryan. Yeah, so this one's more or less a carbon copy. Um, I, I feel like I this is just called the Nook Shook. Um, obviously, I don't think this was used for anything other than perhaps Hugh was just playing around with graphics, trying to make something else look like Test for Echo. I don't know, but uh, maybe a modern day Test for Echo album cover, maybe an anniversary album cover. I just thought it looked cool um, and thought it, it was something worthy of sharing um, because it totally could have been used um, yeah. for Test for Echo. Based on that postcard so next... that, that Neil sent to Hugh, you know, when from uh, Yellowknife and all that. Yeah. So the next, so my choice for Test for Echo um, is the the biggest selling album of any of the covers that you'll see on here. This is something like a 7 million selling album cover. I don't know if a lot of people realize it's actually Hugh Syme artwork. And this one's kind of humorous. This is Aerosmith's Get a Grip from 1993 Geffen Records. It's got this ridiculous picture of this, you know, this, this cow udder with a, a nipple ring on it, you know, test for echo. I'm sure you'd get some sort of sound out of the cow. But yeah, this, believe it or not, this, this is Hugh Syme artwork. Uh, so I had to put it in somewhere. So yeah, there were a few, there were a couple that I thought about using for test for echo. Uh, that's the one I ended up with. So that zips us ahead to vape for trails, which uh, I'll do real quick. This is going to be the oldest artwork seen here, I believe. This is a band that gets talked about a lot in the history of Rush from the uh, mid to late 70s. This is Max Webster and their 1978 album, Mutiny Up My Sleeve. And um, the original album cover doesn't have featuring Kim Mitchell on the cover here. I hate when they did that on these covers. But you've got, you know, I could have used this one for Hold Your Fire, I suppose. Um, this is an early example of Hughes' artwork, really fairly early, 1978. And it's also for Max Webster's, they're definitely their most regular looking album cover. The rest of their album covers are pretty out there, but I thought this was a good one to use. And I thought it would be cool to link the two together since these bands were they toured together so much and they've got so many connections like Battlescar and whatnot. So that was my choice for Vapor Trails. Um, feedback. I'll move right along to feedback. Now, I originally had the uh, test for echo and feedback ones choices flopped, but I went with this one for feedback. This is Queensryche here in the now frontier here spelled H-E-A-R 1997 on EMI. You've got these ears that are in jars. And I, I have to wonder, this album came out early 1997, just a few months after test for echo. And I have to wonder if this might have been an early idea that you might have pitched to Neil for Test for Echo. But, you know, it's it's definitely a, you know, it's a desert feel as opposed to a winter feel. But you can definitely tell he was kind of in a certain mode of design at the time. But I think this one works quite well for feedback. The fact that you've got these ears in jars. Uh, and Ryan's got something for Snakes and Arrows. Yeah. Uh, you ready for this one? I don't oh, think yeah. you guys, I don't think you guys are ready for this one. <laughs> there you go ready drum roll please oh well <laughs> look at that so the story behind this of course if you if you aren't familiar with it um always promoting uh snakes and arrows deep dive we talked about this but the story behind this is neil had the idea of the the, I think it's called the, the Shiva design. Like it was on the fronts of uh, the front of um, Leela. Snake... Le... Wasn't it Leela, yeah, the I... game of snakes and arrows? Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, but yeah. Anyways, um, Neil had this idea to put this the board game. You know, uh, um, I thought it was called like <laughs> shoots and ladders or so, I whatever. But the story goes, Neil had this idea, brought it to Hugh. He was like, "Well, kind of, I you know, I already." designed something for snakes and arrows neil was like no you know he's really dead set on this one he wanted this album cover um to be used so the snakes and arrows artwork that hugh did ended up on the live album and there's some internal art that, that Hugh did as well but the live album which is on the right 
or I think this is, you know, stretched a little bit, but um, I've spoken to, you know, many Rush fans throughout the years that really don't like the actual Snakes and Arrows album cover. They think it's not, you know, Russian enough. They don't think it's Usaim enough, right? Um, or at all. Um, but look, I don't hate it. I don't hate the Snakes and Arrows actual one, but the one that Usaim did, I think, is vastly better. Um, and I think, uh, I definitely think that that paired with the back cover, you know, with the, the, the hands holding the, the snake and, and the arrow, um, sometimes album covers make or break albums. And I think there's a lot of hate for snakes and arrows. And I think if it was something a little bit more abstract, like what, what Hugh Syme did, uh, you may have a little bit more love for that record. So there's my pick. Yeah, it's interesting. That's one of very few times I think that Neil and Hugh didn't agree. Disagreed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yep. Neil's the client. So, so again, that, the, with that road sign on there, I want to bring this back in everybody's consciousness. You know, some people may be like, why didn't you pick that for Snakes and Arrows for that very reason? Well, there's a connection <laughs> because, so that's Coverdale Page, David Coverdale, of course, from White Snake. This is what I picked for Snakes and Arrows. Uh, this is White Snake's Slip of the Tongue album from 1989. Now, so you've got this like banner and this 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 rose like seal on the end of which is supposed to be a snake. Are there any arrows on here? Not really. But uh, this is a classic Hugh Syme album cover. He also designed their their mega 1987 album. Both classic examples of Hugh Syme artwork. So that's the one I went with for Snakes and Arrows. Uh, because I couldn't find a better one for signals or else I would have used the Coverdale page album with, with the road sign on it, which um, leaves us with clockwork will, angels. Tim, I would just say you are right. It was called Leela. Shiva is a motor comp mortal combat character. So there's that there. That's where Shiva's my mind a, was. Uh, Shiva is a, 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 a goddess in um, is it Hindu. Really? I don't want to get it wrong, but the one with all the arms, cool. something like that. She's got Which there is a figure in, in depicted Combat, on. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the last one, this is definitely a humorous one, and yes, this is a Hugh Stein album cover. Uh, it's really the only thing I could think of for Clockwork Angels. It's Warrant Cherry Pie, and there's nothing really Clockwork about it, but isn't she an angel? <laughs> so that's, that's the best one thing I could come up with. So yeah, um, there you go. There, this was guys this was fun this was a really great uh, exploration really into the mastery of hugh symes artwork and without showing really any of the rush album covers we all know what they look like but it is just interesting to think these are all ideas that pass through the creative mind of hugh Syme at one time or another and who knows in another you know uh you know, in twist of fate you know kind of like ghost of a chance something else might have ended up and that's all we would ever have known we would never think it was odd because that's all we would ever have known if it had you know a, a rush you know whatever the logo was they went with that particular album and their their album title on it so guys thank you for for doing this and putting the work into it i really really enjoyed this one i think we only had one piece of artwork that was used twice and that was the Def Leppard one and it wasn't even used for the same album so i love how we all interpreted these these different um sources of hugh symes material and again folks out there you know hugh symes.com is a great way to check out his artwork and so is his instagram page symes studio and you know if you tag if you post an album cover that he designed and tag him in it you might get a like because i have i'm not looking for them per se but if you want to credit him for the artwork then feel free to do it because it does get noticed i've leave had a, a comment or two too leave a comment on this video too if, if there's any yeah youth or, or, or any, either video rush fans or, or tim's vital confessions you know um if there's any album covers that hugh syme did that or any pieces of art that hugh syme did that you can link to and say oh you know this reminded me of hold your fire right it, it, leave a comment because we would love to uh see your thoughts see if there's any other ideas out there that you know folks could get creative with so yeah awesome so yes uh on behalf of rush fans and tim's vinyl confessions I want to thank everybody for watching and I want to thank Ryan and Ralph and Todd for, for agreeing to do this and take my crazy idea and make an episode out of it. And everybody follow Rush fans on all of the socials and uh, follow me if you feel like it. 
and thanks for watching. Take care, everyone.